The first uh, chapter of the book of John, as uh, we saw last week, is talking about the testimony, the verbal testimony concerning the deity of Christ. And as we continue to study the book of John, we will see that John is alternating between the verbal testimony and the testimony by the works of Jesus. This uh, have to do with uh, both of us. That tend to suggest to you that uh, at this point, Jesus wanted to make it clear that there was going to be a change in their relationship. He had grown, of course, Luke makes it clear that Jesus grew in submission to his parents, to his mother. But at this point, he makes it clear that woman, what does this have to do with both of us? He calls her woman. Why? Because from now on, he's going to do only that which his father uh, desires of him to do and not what uh, his mother wants uh, him to do. So we see, uh, what does this have to do with us? So from, he uses, Jesus uses that opportunity to set president uh, of the fact that from now on, he will be doing the will of the father and not the will of the mother. So we have the crisis covered there and we go ahead to see uh, the provision Jesus provides and he instructs these people to fill the jars with water so they fill them. Then he told them, now draw out and take it to the master of the banquet. I feel this is so understated. Where is the miracle? The miracle, if you look carefully, is either between verse 7 and 8 or between verse 8 and 9. You can't really tell, but you can tell that Jesus is making wine out of nothing. That alone proves that he indeed is God. He is God. That emphasizes the fact that he is the almighty God creating wine from nothing. The reason why I'm saying it's so understated, and I feel this is understated, is because you don't just get wine from water. You don't just get wine from uh, declaring people to draw water from uh, the jars. But this is how wine is made. Wine comes from grapes. Grapes comes from the vine. Vine comes from the seed. Seed comes from other trees or other vines. So where, that is how you obtain a wine and you get this seed from other trees and this seed has to be planted on the ground and there should be sunshine, rain and to be able to prepare this tree to grow and to bring forth these grapes. That is how you obtain wine. But here we have it understated. It simply said he turned this water into wine and that's where the miracle is. If we only had this miracle in the Bible, we will know that Jesus indeed is the Lord. Jesus is indeed Lord over all. So there we have uh, provision. Then lastly, uh, we will look at the purpose of this miracle, which is in verses 11. This is how John concludes this story. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. That's how John chooses to end this story. And other stories, other signs is going to uh, put for us as we continue to study the book of John. That is his goal, to end with the fact that after Jesus performed the sign, People believed in him because that is the purpose of the book of John. That is why he wrote this book. 
Uh, the purpose of that book is found in John chapter 20 from verse 30, where he says that many other signs Jesus did in the presence of his disciples, but these were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and in believing you may have life in his name. That is the purpose of this book, and that is the purpose of this sign. The conclusion is, his disciples believed in him. Let me just take you, as I make this conclusion, to John chapter 12, verse 37 to 42, just as a conclusion to show you now where we all belong, even you who are watching right now, where we do belong. Verse 37 says, John 12, verse 37, it says, even after Jesus had performed so many signs in the presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word in Isaiah. So we have three groups of people. We have those who watch the sign of Christ end up believing as we have read in the John chapter 2, verse 11. The disciples saw they believed. That is the first class. They saw the sign, believed. John 12, verse 37 says, Jesus performed so many signs in the presence, but they will not believe in him. So there are those who see, do not believe. Lastly, let's see this last group in verse 42. It says, yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith. For fear, they will be put out of the synagogues. This is the third class. There are those who see the signs, but because of fear or because of the desire to uh, have men approve them, they fear to confess publicly. So where are you? My question to you is, where are you? Are you one of those that see the sign as we have seen today and believe? Or are you one who sees the sign and do not believe? Or are you the one who sees and because of fear or because of seeking approval of men, you choose not to confess publicly? May you be the one who sees, reads, and believes at the end of it, because this is the purpose of the book of John. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word that is living and active. Father, I pray for those who have listened and those who continue to read the Bible to see the signs that Jesus performed, that we will not just end not believing or fearing or seeking approval of men, but we will be such that read, see the miracle signs, and believe in Christ Jesus to be the Messiah and Lord of our heart. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you.